Okay, how can we draw all of our crystals on a grid? Let's take a look. So we know how to draw one crystal. Our goal here is now to get a point on the screen and draw, um, draw a crystal, not a pixel. Goodness. Uh, and continue to do that until we run out of room. So we need to find some X and Y coordinates. We need to set up some um, a grid, basically, is what we need to do. So I thought it might be easier to visualize what we're trying to do here. The light gray box in the middle is the dimension of a crystal. And then so that we can space them out a little bit, we're going to need uh, some room in between them. And I'm calling that padding. And then over here, uh, this white bar is some margin for our canvas so that the uh, we don't run up against the edge. and We have some nice room there. It just looks a little bit better. So with those things, uh, we can start to build our layout uh, variables. Uh, obviously, however many we want to create is also going to change our canvas size. So these variables will be useful both for the creation of the individual crystals and their layout, but also for the overall sketch canvas. So uh, the first thing we might want to do is describe just these boxes because that's the most tangible. Um, and then we can work our way backwards. So let's call that a grid box. And that's going to be equal to whatever the crystal size is plus whatever padding we give it. Well, we don't have any padding yet, so let's create this section, call it layout. Let's create padding. Uh, and I messed around with some stuff, and you can change it if you'd like, but I just came up with this times 0 0.2, 20% um, of the overall crystal size. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, let's describe how many columns and rows we want. So I want three columns and I want four rows. Again, this will help us set up our canvas size, so we need that. Um, what else have we not described? The, this white stripe across the outside, I haven't described that margin yet. Um, so we'll put that in, the margin. Um, we'll set that just equal to crystal size divided by two. How's that? Okay, cool. Um, so now we need to create a canvas, but that's going to change. Let's say we change the size of crystal size. That's going to change all of this, and it's going to change how big our canvas needs to be. So those are likely going to be variables we create here. So let's const call it total x, and we'll make one for total y. Total y. Um, and we just need to add our stuff up. So we've got uh, how many grid boxes across is grid boxes times columns. And this is going to be grid box times rows. And then we can use those amounts to fill out our canvas. Total Y. Great. Uh, what are we missing here? We are missing the margin. So let's add that in. Oh, cool. So that's going to push us into the margin. It's going to include the margin. It's going to include the width of all of the boxes across and all of the boxes below uh, in, in the rows. Okay, so now that we've created that, why don't we start finding these points we're going to draw our crystals at. So how can we do that? Well, if you're looping through a 2D array, which is what we're going to build, that's what a grid is, you're going to go through the Xs, and for each X, you'll go through the Ys. And then when you move to this X, go through the Ys, and then this X, and go through the Ys. That is a nested loop. So we're going to go for let x equals 0, x is less than columns, x plus plus. And then for each one of those columns, we want to go through all the rows. Let y equal 0, y is less than rows, y plus plus. All right. So how do we get the final actual pixel position? Well, we can use the grid box for this. We can say const pause x will also need a pause y. And we're going to pass this to the crystal constructor. Um, we can just use x times the grid box because we know it's going to be, we want three of them across and they're this size. So at the first time, it's going to be at zero grid box. And that's going to be a problem, but we'll fix that later. And then it's going to be one times a grid box, two times a grid box. So we're just moving over that much every time in the x direction, an entire grid box size every time. And it's going to be the same for the y. Nothing fancy. 
cool. And then let's create a crystal here. New crystal. We're going to pass in the pause X, pause Y. And we should probably save it somewhere. I mean, we could render it here too if we wanted, but it's not best practice. Um, what if we wanted to do a whole bunch of other stuff and then render it? Well, we can save it somewhere. Why don't we create um, an array called all crystals and make it an empty array. And then down here, we can just say all crystals dot push that into there. And then down here where we want to render it, we can just go through those and render each one. All right, let's see what we have. Whoa, they're really big. We don't need them that big. Let's change it. We change one number and our system should work. That's so cool. All right, so here's where our layout issue um, comes to bear. Basically, because we're drawing everything at the center, uh, we're, we're starting up here at zero times grid box. So that's going to be zero, zero here. And it's going to start drawing them up there. So uh, we need to add a little something. And so I want it to be part margin that still exists over here. I can show you that. Background gray. No, you don't like that? Maybe that's not a... Oh, that's in setup. That's why. I thought maybe I just spelled it wrong, but it's in the entirely wrong place. Yeah, so we have some margin working here, but this, this start is not working for us. Um, I think actually we could just do this. Let's see. I could be wrong about this, though. I think I am. Oh, yeah, I know I am. But it's going to help us see the problem. Oops. Okay. Cool. So now we're getting closer to what we want, but this start just isn't quite working for me. Um, so really what I'd like to do is, because I'm simple minded, is just create a, an entire thing, an entire variable called start. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that it should be, you know, we had that problem where it was um, drawing halfway. So the, the, the center was at, at X zero. So I'm going to go ahead and move it all the way over so that it's where it is now. And then I'm going to add the margin. Effectively, it's margin times two. But in my pea brain, this makes more sense. I apologize if it does not for you. Um, basically, what's happening in my mind is this is kind of where we started. Before we started trying to fix problems in a sloppy way. Right, And so they were here. So if I move them, crystal size divided by 2, then it'll be at the edge. Then I want to move them plus the margin, whatever that is. And I can't ever remember. So I've just created this, this whole thing by myself. And then we can just put that here. All right. And then we'll also put it down here. Now we got something that looks nice. And we can get rid of this horrible teal background. Redraw. Awesome. Cool. That looks great. Um, why don't we do the SVG? Well, let's keep, let's keep making fancy stuff here. Yay. It's working. Um, so yeah, some of these, Ooh, I like this one a lot, actually this one too. So if you're getting, um, less good results than you would like, this is when you would, Ooh, that's rare. This is when you would play around with the weights here and uh, you know change the likelihood of any of these combinations happening you can also get fancier with the overall um, you might you know switch into layers and anytime we're picking a random number there you could mess with that or you could start to design a new system entirely as for how you create these maybe this whole uh, array of objects things bothers you and you want to do it a different way so feel free to do that all right so uh, all that's left really is to add the button uh, that exports these SVGs. It's super simple, and I'll just make a really quick video in, for that. And then for those of you who are interested, we'll see um, a different way of creating these crystal objects that is not object-oriented and is more functional programming. Um, so stay tuned for that in the advanced section.